Welcome home. We are WNST. Tass of Baltimore. We're AM 1570. Baltimore positive. Our friends at the Maryland Lottery have us going out on the road doing a Maryland Crab Cake Tour. We are uh, doing an east side, west side. We're going to be at Coco's uh, on uh, December 4th. We're going to be at Gertrude's December 5th. We're going to be at Faithy's on the 12th. I'm reading the whole thing. Costas on the 19th. And then I'm doing a whole bunch of new places for November, for Thanksgiving. Uh, and then I get to bring young old friends back on um you know if i'd have known better we could have a stokely cast or a nasty cast or a nester cast but the manning cast is the thing and it's broadcast right in this guy's neighborhood brandon stokely is our super bowl 35 champion he is uh, out in the denver area folks uh, don't know he does that he does my old job, sports radio in Denver uh, these days, and has done it for a number of years out there. Uh, and as the Broncos and the Ravens get together, it gives me a chance to uh, to celebrate you, Brandon Stokely. How are you? How is your life? What's going on out there? Got a decent football team, huh? Yeah, yeah, they're not bad. Um, you know, still got a little ways to go, trying to figure this quarterback situation out. Um, but yeah, man, been doing radio out here uh for a little, around eight years, a little, um, and uh, so I just moved to the morning show, so I'm doing from six to ten, uh, which is nice. Get to get on the golf course a little bit earlier now, um, uh, and yeah, yeah, looking forward to the game, you know, this weekend, and um, seeing what it, uh, seeing of the Broncos, how they stack up against, you know, one of the better teams in the NFL in the Baltimore Ravens. Is that a Cleveland Browns ticket stub behind? Is, is that a ticket stub from the drive, the Elway Drive game, by any chance? What is that? Is that really what it is? That's I exactly had that ticket. what it is. I exactly. had that ticket. I went to that game. I, exactly I have that ticket. I have my stub, but I reckon. How can I see that from so? Are you like bragging on the Browns' victory there? Wait, why is that out? Is that did you win that in an auction? What's that? Yeah, no, I, I collect tickets. I like tickets. Um, and so that's kind of a hobby of mine. And that's just a cool one. You know, living in Denver now, that's the, uh, that's the you know, that's a pretty cool place. So uh, I like cool tickets like that. And I got a few of them up. Um, let's see. Uh, I got. Uh, I I'm got... sure you have a Super Bowl 35 or two in there somewhere. There it is. Yeah, I was going to say. I saw there mine. Is. Mine is part of a huge collage in the old WNST studio with the front of the book, you and me eating crab cakes and doing all. <laughs> you know, life takes us in funny ways. Did you know you were going to do sports radio? I mean, back when you were sitting out at the barn eating oysters with me. Oh, no. No, absolutely not. Um, you know, just didn't know what 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 uh, avenue I was going to go after football and try to play as long as I could. And, um, and then it just kind of came out of nowhere. And so now I really do. I enjoy it. It's fun. Talk sports and, um, you know, it's work, work a few hours a day and, and, and get to talk sports. So it's not a bad gig. I've, I've really enjoyed it. You know, you say that, that's so flippant. 33 years in this, people think I work a couple of hours a day and just go golfing, right? Like, <laughs> you, you know, it's it's really, and I guess in your area, and, and we'll get to the Broncos in a minute, but like Dion's thing up the road's been something yeah. for your area, right? Like, it's a real phenomenon because so many people, including my friend Chad Brown, and so many people played ball there or had some affinity for Boulder, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's been um, quite the whirlwind the last two years. It's been great. Uh, brought a lot of great attention. Um, and they see you. Uh, they went from one of the worst teams in college football um, uh, to now they are, what, six and two and um, got a chance to win out. Uh, probably might be favored in all the last four games, but get to even if they get to eight, nine, ten wins. I mean, that's just remarkable what he's done. And they got two of the top players in all of college football. And they got a guy in Travis Hunter that we just haven't seen anything like him. I'm playing both ways, playing over 100 plays a game at such a high level. Uh, it's just really remarkable. Um, and the turnaround's been remarkable. It's been fun. It's been entertaining. I tell you that. It's been a lot of fun. Where are we in the world where we have, like, baseball players who pitch and hit, like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, we're just at a different thing. Like, the Bo Jackson thing, you were, you know, we were, we're the same age. So, we were kids with that. Yeah. And just Jim Abbott, just amazing feats that it's pretty amazing you played as long as you did in the league. I often wonder, like, guys like you, if you didn't make it, what you would you have done? You'd have been a coach, right? You'd have been a teacher and a coach, right? 
Yeah, I think I'd have been a coach. I grew up around it. My dad was a coach. Um, and, you know, I'm not the smartest guy. I don't know what else I would have done. I love sports. So <laughs> probably probably coaching was was next on the list. You know, football, playing football didn't work out. I would have been coaching football. Well, you and guys like you are such a gift to me through all of these years. And we remain friends and we do the same thing now. I look, when the Denver schedule, when the schedule came out and saw Denver, I'm like, well, not much. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and, and I wondered about Peyton. In baseball, I wonder about Terry Francona coming back and people that come back and do it. Dick Vermeil did it in your era. And, I, you know, I think to myself, like, why are they at it? And then you look up. He's got a young kid. Team's five and three. You mentioned you don't know what else you would do. Imagine if you're Sean Payton. And I would ask you at five and three, and I'll hear that they're soft and all this stuff. Hey, the Ravens lost to the Browns and the Raiders. They're, they shouldn't be smelling themselves around here at five and three either. But five and three feels different in Denver right now. After what Payton went through a number of years ago, winning it's been a really couple, three coaches, quarterbacks, my, our buddy, Joe Flacco. I shouldn't say my buddy, your buddy too, Joe Flacco. There's been a lot going on there. And now we look up, it's Halloween. We just got our ass kicked and injuries have set in here. And and I look and say, wow, could, could Denver come in here and beat him this week? Maybe, <laughs> oh, maybe. I mean, look, if you if y'all let the Raiders go to Baltimore and win, then yeah, the Denver, Denver Broncos could go to Baltimore and win. I mean – um last year what it was the colts i mean they're just it, it's just some of those head scratchers um one week ravens look like the best team in the nfl and the next week it's how do you let that happen um it's a long season and, and i think the important part is uh, is playing your best football and stay as healthy possible at the end of the year um and but certainly yeah the, the broncos defense is a good defense and and over here we're looking at as a test for that defense going up against Two real dudes. They haven't seen you know anyone like Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry all year. So what does this defense look like when you go up against you know one of the best offenses in the NFL? Because they've done a great job. They've carried this football team, trying to develop a, a young quarterback uh, with not a ton of talent around him. Bo Nix offensively. Um, so defense has been playing great, and they've been finding different ways to win the football game. They're a well coached football team. Um, and so, you know, if, if you, you know, if you're the Ravens, if, if you don't give it away, it's going to be tough for the Broncos to, to go to Baltimore and win it. But, but that defense has been good. They've been finding ways to get it done. Uh, the quarterback young guy, I mean, not, uh, you know, Peyton's thing at all, right? Like from Drew Brees on, I mean, that's what he had forever and ever a new one style. Clearly the Russell Wilson thing was different coming into it last year. And he's having some su success in Pittsburgh as well, but that switch this off season and look, man, you're a guy who played in the league, but you can be as critical. You I mean, you got a lot of cage and rage Cajun in you when okay. all of this is going on and they're getting their ass kicked. And the last couple, three times you and I've gotten together, had not been a whole lot of good news to report around there uh, because they haven't won a lot of ball games. Now, all of a sudden, I mean, you're on the radio every day seeing this thing happen and saying, how's this going to work with a rookie quarterback? And how do we get to 500 halfway through the season? How do they have a chance to be a wild card? How do they have a chance to compete? Because you were on some of these sort of tweener teams that the media didn't think so much of or you thought as, well, they're not going to win a whole lot of games. But when you find the lightning in a bottle and they're finding it in Washington right now, right? Yeah. When and, and the Bears as well, when you have a guy that can play a little bit and you play responsibly um, and the defense can keep you in games, maybe they don't need to do as much if they're not making mistakes. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, the Broncos, since Peyton Manning left uh, in, in 2016, uh, 2015 is last year. Um, it, they, it's just been revolving door after revolving door. They tried to draft a quarterback in the first round. It didn't work out. Then it was a uh, veteran quarterback after veteran quarterback. And it just, it wasn't working. Uh, didn't went down the Russell Wilson, uh, road and, and that certainly didn't work out here. Um, and we'll see how it, how it finishes there in Pittsburgh. Uh, but, uh, you, you gotta find that young quarterback and, and um, you gotta develop them. You gotta give them a little bit of time. And, you know, it's it's a hard thing to do. It's not easy. It's not an easy thing to do. And and so hopefully, you know, everyone here in Denver is hoping that uh, we found our young quarterback uh, because it's it's not fun when you don't have a quarterback, man. It's hard to win in the NFL. And Bo's done a good job. He really has. Uh, it hasn't been perfect. Uh, he's had some things he's had to work through. But uh, last week was his best football game. 
and it was against the Panthers, but he looked he looked good. He, he was going through his reads, his progressions, his footwork looked good. Um, so and they got to help him out. You know, the guys around him have to help him out, like like with most young quarterbacks. Brendan Stokely is our guest. He is out in the Rocky Mountain City. He's up in the Denver, Colorado, bringing the five and three football team in a place he once played. Uh, and uh, of all the dumb things I've ever said on the air, asking you if you watch the game you played in, it's right up there, 33 years. Um, and you made a life there. And football is so important there, right? And seeing where they are and where the franchise has been, what do you make of Peyton? And what do you make of all of it. I mean, Bolin dying, different leadership, John Elway's role, Peyton's role, you guys living there and seeing it and being a breathing part of it, trying to put it back together in a place like that where there's just really high expectations, yeah. but also uh, kind of like a place where fans aren't going to go away. You know what I mean? Like they prided themselves in the seventies on not having unsold tickets. And when people didn't show up, I mean, I've heard a lot of incompletes there. And as much as the Buffaloes, we brought that up and uh, where that is, the Broncos are still a number one and us Kansas city next week. This is the kind of time where they, they bust at the old orange crush. If they believe, if they believe you five and five, two weeks from now, it's, eh, we got a young quarterback. We're hanging in. Maybe he's this, maybe he's that. But if you catch lightning in a bottle, win one or two of these games, these are the ones where you say, eh, beating the Panthers is something, but they haven't been to Baltimore yet. Yeah, you know, if they could get one of these two, going to Baltimore, going to Kansas City, that would be huge. Uh, but they gave themselves a little leeway here by by getting a five and three until this uh, right up to, against this, these tough two road games. It's going to be tough. Um, but, yeah, it starts at the top, you know, ownership. And very, very fortunate the Broncos. They got a home run ownership group. And and the Walton Penner group, um, Greg Penner, uh, Kerry Walton, um, Robson Walton, uh, great group. Uh, they're invested. They want to win, and they're putting money into the team, and and they're investing in the community. So, uh, very fortunate there. You see, around the NFL, and I was on a lot of all my teams had great owners. Um, uh, so I was fortunate. But you look around the NFL, you probably could look down the road there. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, at at what if you don't have the right ownership, uh, the right owner, uh, what it, what it could uh, do to your franchise. So very fortunate. I'm a Baltimore baseball fan, dude. You think I've talked about it? Oh, there you bit? go. There you go. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, and I talk about now, it, right? You're dude, we now. talk about it a lot. We talk about it a lot. Like, you know, what we've been through here as a baseball, we, you know, we had Ursay's dad here, right? I, I have my Baltimore Colts belt buckle over here. Like you have your Indianapolis Colts ring over your shoulder right. and it means as much to me. And, you know, you mentioned going through ticket subs and stuff. You and I will have a whole side conversation about collectibles and fun things that I, I I've gotten back into my Houston Oiler thing a little bit from the old days. Cause it's so defunct and they can't win. They can't lose this week. Like the Baltimore Colts can't win or can't lose this week. So, right. um, but in, in the case of what, Denver and the Broncos are and what it could be defensively, dude, we've got problems here. And um, the fact that John's talking about the highest paid second highest paid player on the defense, not getting on the field and being a coach's decision and no speaky. And he, he wasn't making plays. I'm talking about Marcus Williams and the back end. Then you lose Marlon Humphrey. You, you lose Nate Wiggins last week. You lose two defensive linemen in the middle of the game. And Brent Urban went down. Travis Jones wasn't doing well. Michael Pierce went down with the calf this week. It's a different oh, team when you start yeah. losing three, four, five players when you're like smelling yourself with four wins in a row, five wins in a row. We're, we're freight training the Bills on, you know, national TV. And to your point, I'm uh, five days out on, oh, man, the Ravens going to the Super Bowl. They're number one in the power rankings. Then you go to Cleveland and lay a steamer. A couple of guys get hurt and you don't move the ball and you don't run the ball. And to your point. Broncos defense a little bit more stat. I mean, I, I see this as a little bit more of a balanced matchup if you can keep Lamar in the pocket, if you can tackle uh, uh, King Henry. Yeah, it's strength on strength. You know, Baltimore's offense against uh, the Broncos defense, and it's probably weakness on weakness. Uh, you, you you know, I, I get it. You, you, it. And that's the thing in the NFL. Injuries determine a season, you know, um, and it's hard to predict predict and project what it's going to look like week 13 week 17 if you lose a couple key guys it's just hard it's hard to win in the nfl um and, and so it's hard to win on the road it's hard to win with a young quarterback um 
And and but yeah, I mean you you look at the matchup and Broncos offense, they 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 don't have a ton of talent, uh playmakers around Bo Nix. Um, so they're trying to win the old-fashioned way. Make a few plays, don't turn the football over, uh, and play really good defense. And you know, that's their formula right now. But you know, if you don't screw it up, if the opposing team doesn't screw it up, I mean it's hard, it's gonna be hard for the Denver Broncos to go on the road against the Ravens and score over, you know, 21 points. For you seeing this offense being so different than anything you ever played in, anything like it, and that's before Derrick Henry got here. By the way, I've been bragging a whole lot because it's trade week here in the NFL, and the Ravens made a trade for a wide receiver on on Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon. And this time last year, Luke and I were going back and forth. And you know, Luke, you know, we're every day we get after and talk football around here. And I'm like, Derrick Henry changes his team. Derrick Henry, they'll win a Super Bowl. They'll be unstoppable if somehow they could have wrangled Derrick Henry out of Tennessee this time last year when Dobbins wasn't right. And keep our buddy Anthony Mitchell, your teammate Anthony yeah. Mitchell's boy, was running and before he got injured and all that. I'm like, if they had a, if they had somebody you really had to stop your hips as a linebacker and a safety and an edge guy coming in on Derrick Henry going that way, Lamar Jackson going that way. And Oh, but some Brandon Stokely cat, you know, cutting across (laughs) the middle or, or Mark Andrews or whomever, Zay flowers, pick, pick your poison and Aguilar, pick any of those guys. And just saying, now you got to contend with some real ish, right? What would you make if you were spry and you were Zay Flowers or you were spry or even if you were an old fart like Aguilar, like you were the second time you came in here and you see this? What does that do in a huddle? What does that do when you get off the bus on Sunday, Brandon? That's fun. That's fun. I mean, you're going to have great matchups. Um, They're not worried about the slot receiver. They're not worried about the outside receiver. They're not worried about the tight end. First and foremost, when that defensive coordinator gets up there on Wednesday, and he's talking to his defense. We got to stop Lamar Jackson. We got to stop this guy. We got to keep him in the pocket, and we have to stop him. Second now is Derrick Henry. Um, and then after that, you know, you start going through the receivers, Zay Fowers, Andrews, Lively, you know, Bateman, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, so um, that's when it becomes fun when you have a running game like they have. Guess what? You're going to have great matchups, one-on-one. Give me one-on-one all day. I, I love to see – uh, one-on-one coverage. So the receivers for the Ravens, they got it pretty dang good. Well, I would say Brandon stokely has got it pretty dang good. He's out in Denver, Colorado, doing sports radio, living the high life out there, ski slopes, red rocks, all the good stuff, good good college football going on now, four-sport town, all this great stuff happening, and the Broncos sort of coming to life. So from afar, when you see the Ravens lose a game to the Raiders, lose a game to the Browns, I'm sure you watched every play of the Chiefs game to kick off the season, and where Lamar is and where this team is and how you played for John, you played for Eric twice, Ozzy, the old tree, how they put this thing together has been brilliant. And then how you keep it together and get guys onto the field and make it happen. I mean, Ronnie Stanley's been the greatest story, just getting back out on the field, being able to do it at this level because it's such an important position. But, you know, last week they're winning the Super Bowl. This week they're going to the outhouse and I'm sitting here talking to them losing to Bo Nix. Yeah, that's the NFL. It's week to week, you know, and if you don't bring your A game, you will lose. I mean, the other guys are paid professionals. I don't, you know, and you, you got a little unlucky there that you play Cleveland uh, without Deshaun Watson, you know, and it was Jameis Winston because they had no chance if it was Deshaun. Um, and so you get unlucky there if you're Baltimore, but you still got to win that football game. But, you know, sometimes a loss isn't the worst thing. Now, you don't want a bunch of losses, but sometimes it can kind of humble you a little bit, um, get you a little bit maybe refocused when everybody's been patting you on the back. Um, so, it's it's a long season, and, you know, us as fans and media members, you kind of ride the wave, uh, ups and downs. One week you're the best, the next week you stink. Um, so Baltimore is a really good football team. They, they got to, they gotta, you know, play a little bit better defensively. Uh, it's not to the standard that it was in the past. Uh, and get healthy. And they get healthy. Nobody wants to see that team. Um, they don't. And, yeah, I know the question's out there. You know, can they take the next step this year in the playoffs? Can Lamar take that next step in the playoffs? And ultimately, they got to figure out how to do it. You know, we had that when I was with Indy and Peyton Manning, um, and and we finally had to get over that hurdle. We finally had to figure out how to do it and how to beat New England, and we finally got it done. So Baltimore, 
definitely has those questions. Um, and, you know, but uh, look, it's still a really, really good football team. And guess what? I'm not betting against them. Well, I, you know, and I said last week, you know, shorter rest, playing a little later, like the, the whole part of it just felt a little like the game division game. Jim Schwartz knows how to prepare for them. They had players, Miles Garrett, you know, that player that, that can make a difference. The Darius Smith, you can't do it without players. And you mentioned the Broncos, um, you and everyone's like, well, the skill position play, you, you know, we've dropped a lot of passes around here, dropped a lot of picks around here on the defensive side. Ooh, Give me a, a bad little primer. Yeah, give me a little primer on the, the players to watch. Who are the Broncos? I don't know much about the Broncos, man. Like, I watched everybody give Peyton all that love down in New Orleans and the whole thing going on there. But I look at the team and say, Sertan, sure. But, you know, the sort of the, an interesting cast of characters. And now all Mannings or, – or, excuse me, uh, Peyton. Uh, I say Peyton and Manning. Sean yeah. Peyton, not well, your man, neighbor. Yeah. Sean Peyton. Uh, Sean Peyton's guys. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, offensively, you got Cortland Sutton, big, big physical wide receiver, uh, runs good routes. Um, uh, other than that, uh, don't have much there uh, at the wide receiver position. The running back uh, spot now, uh, their home run hitters, Jalil McLaughlin, good running back, solid running back in his second year. Um, and, and and that's about it as a running back spot. Bo Nix, he, he's very athletic. He can make you pay with his legs. Now, he's not Lamar Jackson. They will have some design runs for him. Uh, and when plays break down, uh, he, he can make you pay for it. Uh, and he's done a nice job of that uh, through the first uh, eight games of the season. Defensively, they got they got just a solid group. Got a good defensive front. Zach Allen came over uh, two years ago. Uh, this is his second year with the Broncos from Arizona. Uh, really good interior uh, lineman. Their outside edge guys have done a good job of getting to the quarterback. Jonathan Cooper, uh, Nick Benito, uh, and Jonah Ellis, a rookie that they drafted out of Utah, done a nice job. And you got Pat Sertan um, over there playing as good as any corner in the NFL this year. And they do have a unicorn. They got a unicorn on the other side of Sertan. And I thought I made um, that unicorn extinct back in 2000 in Super Bowl 35, but the white cornerback has returned. The white, yeah, I know. I know. Son of Jason Seahorn or related I, to him? Not sure, uh, but we got we're still doing some DNA testing. Um, but it I think the white cornerback has returned and Riley Moss. He is and he is balling. Really, really good uh player, tough competitor, can run, can jump, uh, great athlete. So uh he's done a great job in his second year out of Iowa. So just a really good uh group that plays hard. Uh, plays good team defense. Brandon Stokely is our guest. He is a Super Bowl, not is, always will be a Super Bowl 35 champion. Not was, is, always will be. Uh, <laughs> and uh, out in Denver uh, as a neighbor to, to Peyton Manning. All right, a couple things to go through. You guys have Kansas City next week. We get Cincinnati short rest on Thursday night, kind of. And Cincinnati, uh, they're another one that knows how to prepare for Lamar, seeing him and like all of that season falling apart for them. Um, but the Mahomes thing, you guys going to see him next week. We see him in our nightmares. Lamar sees him in the kryptonite, like all of the, all the part of that. You had that with Brady. You also sort of had that with Peyton Manning a little bit because nobody else could beat him. Um, when you have that guy, it's just, what do you make of the next level of, you know, now that you're a generation out of football to see this kid doing this again, where you always say like, it's too hard to be Michael Jordan. It's too hard to be – you can't win three. You can't win before you're 30. No way. He's doing it. Yeah, it's been impressive. Uh, early on, you know, they had weapons around him. And you look at Kelsey in his prime, Tyreek Hill. And all of a sudden, they remade that football team and trade away, you know, one of the fastest and, and toughest guys to uh, cover in the NFL and Tyreek Hill. And they just keep doing it. And it's it's really remarkable. Now, their defense is really good, and they played really good over the last few years. But uh, what he's able to do, when it matters the most, the guy just finds a way to make a play. Right? It doesn't matter. It can look ugly for three and a half quarters. Uh, but it seems like uh, at the end of the football game, he's going to find a way to make a play to win the game. And that's what special players do. And I think the great thing about Mahomes, to me, is he doesn't care about stats. He really doesn't. Um, and you know, it's nice when you've had a lot of great stats and you won a lot of Super Bowls. I think it's easier to, to, to operate that way, that way. Uh, but he's a team guy, his teammates love him and he just goes out there and wants to win. Doesn't care about stats. 
Russell Wilson's team six and two, and they're in first place. And my boy Mike Tomlin's a witch, right? I mean, I don't know how they do it, but could you have? I mean, as crazy as you might think five and three for the Broncos are in your own market, or as crazy as we think five and three is here, because everybody's the 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 bar's higher here. The Pittsburgh thing and the second life, third life for for Russell Wilson, I should say at this point. Astonished by that or no, not at all. Just wrong guy, wrong team last year. No, I mean, we'll see. It's two games for us. That's it. Uh, what, Jets and Giants. So it's not like he's beaten um, top-tier teams right now. We got to put in perspective a little bit. Uh, now, he's played well. He's he's done I – mean, but the first quarter and a half uh, against the Jets, they, they were booing him off the field. We can't forget that. Um, but he's done well. I, and I always thought that would be a good fit for him. They play great defense. Um, they got a good running game and they're not going to ask him to make a lot of plays. Uh, so just play within the confines of the offense and, and you'll be fine. I don't know if, if he's been humbled over the last uh, couple of years that were when he was uh, with the Broncos, just right. wasn't the right fit. Obviously with Nathaniel Hackett last year, if you look at his stats last year, stats were actually pretty dang good. Uh, didn't turn the football over, didn't throw interceptions, uh, and threw for, you know, up, uh, 28, 29 touchdowns. So, uh, the, the, he, 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 you know, I, I think if you put him in the right system, he can still play good football. And I think Pittsburgh, obviously they know how to win and they got to, it's like, the, it's like the Ravens. They just keep on doing it every single year. Well, I tell you, uh, you know, I'm a Monday night football watcher going back to Howard Cosell and wanting to watch those oiler jerseys and Dan Pastorini and Earl Campbell and Billy White shoes dance in the end zone back when I was a kid on Monday night football. But this Manning cast thing, I, I have I don't watch it a lot. But when Flacco was on, I put it on when dad was on for because I've had him all on my show. I, I know Peyton this much. I still think like you hang out with him three days a week and you guys are like really good friends. <laughs> Last time I checked in, I don't know if you are or not. But do you watch the Manning cast? I need to ask. I mean, don't, he doesn't listen to the show. He'll never know. But do you watch the Manning cast? Well, we're having a sleepover tonight at my house. Next week's going to be at his house. So, um, uh, yeah, you know, we we we're, 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 we don't want to only hang out. We sleep over and uh, we cook for each other and do all of that. Um, no, I, uh, I I see I see him. You know, it just depends. He's a pretty busy guy. That's their right. I, I mean, know, guy, but you guys were, you is, know, uh, I mean, you're in the Manning brotherhood. You're like in, you're like a nephew, like yeah. a cousin, sort of, right? Well, I'm the long lost brother that, uh, or son. I'm the long lost son that Archie never had. He tells me that every time I see him. Right. Uh, I mean, that's what he, I know. I'm the athletic you are. That's kid that I'm he saying. always. Look, if one of my best friends was doing Monday Night Football every week, I don't know that I'd be committed to watching it. You know what I mean? Like, I might watch Joe Buck just to get away from him a little bit. My wife would. My wife yeah. doesn't listen to the show. Yeah, well, I, you know, Archie, like I said, was was uh, he tells me that I'm the uh, athletic kid that he never had. So um, I, I, I I always appreciate that uh, perspective from him, um, and he he's awesome. Uh, uh, but uh, he's look, your favorite I, Manning, probably, right? He's everybody's uh, favorite Manning, right? Oh, without Olivia. a doubt, maybe Olivia. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, without a doubt, uh, Archie's the man. Love that guy. Um, I uh uh no I watch it when I can you know when 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 I'm around I watch it I I don't love the guest um honestly I like I like when it's Eli Peyton and if you want to put Bill in there put Bill in there you know um that's fine I I just like I like their humor I like to get their perspective uh, of things uh I don't really care about whatever comedian you're putting on there that's not why I'm watching it you know I want to watch some football and I want to hear their thoughts and I think they do a really good job of it. Um, I did make my cameo on there a couple weeks ago, uh, which was which was fun. I was a prop now, so he was he was talking about the back shoulder throw. So I was the receiver um, that he was throwing the football to. Um, so that's that's the extent of my really of my Manning. That's your fifteen uh, seconds instead of fifteen yeah. minutes. That's fine. I mean, you look. Hang on for as long as you can at being an honorary Manning member. You'll always be an honorary Baltimorean here and always be a Super Bowl 35 champion. We love Brandon Stokely. You got to get back to your Denver thing. I will see you well, on the other side. I hope we get together hey, sometime soon. So I got we what a kid that I coached in high school for two for two years. Well, maybe it was one. He was just one year there. Uh, um, Roger Rosengarden. Or, Ro yeah, you know, you know, I, okay. I, 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 I have he's the right tackle. We'll have an eye yes. on him on Sunday. Yeah, that 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 is my guy. So y'all take care of him. 
uh, over there in Baltimore. That's my guy. I saw coach, him a bunch coach this Brandon, summer. Coach Stokes. And, uh, All right. Yeah. Well, I, I wish I, I wasn't really coaching him. He he was awesome, and he's a great guy. So uh, I'm always pulling for him and uh, see him out there playing a little bit, which is good to see. So y'all take care of him, all right? All right, you and me and Red Rock soon. Brandon Stokely, I'm Nestor. We're WNSD AM 1570. Tash in Baltimore. We never stop talking. Baltimore, positive.